tonight? Oh, come on, not three of you. Who, who else over here is excited to be in church tonight? Keith, let me hear it. Come on. Amen. Hey, how'd y'all think that our young Christopher did tonight? MC for the first time. Good job, man. Proud of you. Love it. He's a minister in training. We're proud of him and uh, one of our interns. And uh, we love equipping and training leaders all the time. And uh, so we're excited. Hey, um, tonight we have several couples and families that are on vacation. We want to just send a quick shout out to Keys and Catherine and a bunch of other folks who are all over the world. This last week, um, Shannon and Alex actually went to also minister to Mickey, Pluto, Meanie, all the other Disney characters out Disney World and Orlando. So one of these days we're going to save those folks and they're going to come to church. But anyways, uh, we believe in vacationing. We believe in hanging out and uh, uh, investing into family time. So uh, we're excited about that. Tonight I'm also honored to have the patriarchs, if you will, of the Aguirre family, Abuelo and Abuelita, with us from Argentina. Dios le bendiga. We welcome you to City Life Church. Honored to have you. Gracias. Amen. We got friends from all over the place, people popping in from Brazil also just tonight, folks from uh, uh, all the way from Comunidade Cristã de Curitiba, and also from Abba Church right over here. And uh, so folks are coming from all over the place to hang out at City Life, and, uh, and it's a good thing. Amen? So Joe, have a good week so far? Was it good? It's getting gooder. It's getting better because God keeps doing new things. And uh, we had a pretty eventful week ourselves. Uh, had the fun time of hanging out with some young people this week, going up to Vacaville for the EG conference. It's fun hanging out with some crazy young people, amen, and uh, over a thousand young people just going crazy for Jesus, and it was a blast. We had a good time uh, eating fast food for lunch, dinner, breakfast, midnight, just eating crazy foods all the time, and it was good, good experiences. Then we came back Friday night, and we had our Friday night live here. We had a uh, Hawaiian barbecue Friday night, so that was fun. A uh, huge shout out to the entrance for helping us with that as well. And then last night, we had an event. It wasn't really hosted by us, though we made the, the, the facilities available to uh, our city, and uh, it was a collaboration of artists and just groups from all over San Francisco who came. The event was called Undivided, and uh, we had a packed house, man. And there were people everywhere, and uh, we had a variety of different genres from hip hop to borderline country slash whatever kind of music that was, and uh, all kinds of other performances. Marisa just lost some joy right there when I talked about country music, but that's all right. And uh, it was a great event, though, and uh, we we're honored to partner with so many other uh, uh, ministries and churches from the area. So God's doing a good thing, and we're excited to be a part of that. Amen. Anybody excited to be alive today? How many of you know that God is not dead, but he is alive indeed, even as we were worshiping? Amen. And uh, God's doing new things in our lives, and we just have to keep our eyes and our hearts open. We've been in a series called uh, Call to Action, and tonight is the last message uh, from this series, and uh, then we'll be transitioning into a new one. I'm going to be jetting out this week uh, to Brazil to go uh, speak at a conference for a few days, and then I'll be back. It's going to be one of those brief and amazing trips. And uh, um, so we're excited for the month of March that now is upon us. Can you believe March is already here? And uh, we're going to have a couple guest speakers coming through and uh, uh, some, some familiar faces that are going to be coming through as well. We're excited about that. So keep your antenna open for all of the upcoming events. And then on our birthday, Sonia, on April 19th, a Saturday right before Easter, we're doing a big city outreach, huge Easter egg hunt. And I love to have all of City Life Church, those of you who work on Saturdays, take that Saturday off, this, the Saturday before Easter, and uh, let's together love on our community. We're hoping to reach hundreds of kids, and uh, so you'll be hearing more details about that. So uh, it's going to be good on our birthday. What a better way to celebrate our birthdays than doing an outreach. Is that right? Come on, girl. And uh, so tonight is our last uh, segment of this series. And um, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be going into uh, the primary text that we've been sitting on for the last couple of weeks, and that's found in Acts chapter 2. So if you can click over there, or like Chris, if you have the old school paper Bible, you can flip over there too, and it's all good. Very quickly, though, as a recap from last Sunday, just in case you weren't here, we talked about the perfect fit 
that Jesus comes and he's the one who places us in his family and it's a perfect fit when he's involved and uh, we had a challenge for all of our church family to be 100% sold out for God to be all in to be invested and uh, then we talked about the four musts for every Christian we grabbed one of our chairs one of our stools over there we looked at the four legs and we talked about when you're a balanced Christian you have these four fundamental disciplines in place your person of prayer and all of us myself included all of us are being equipped it's a lifelong course. Sonia's trying to finish her high school, get her GED. We're praying for Sam that he'll finish junior high one of these days. And, but for the rest of us all, going through the school of hard knocks and all, um, it's always a school and we're growing more and more in the knowledge of who God is and praise God for the gifts that he brings to us. But in Ephesians 4, 16, the key verse here, it says this, and then he, Jesus, it says that he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. And it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Jesus gives these gifts so that the whole body then can help one another. Now, I was studying this out and in the Greek, by the way, I, I knew a little Greek when I uh, lived in Concord. But then he moved to Chicago. Some of you guys will get that joke tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> I know. Thank you. I'll sign autographs later. Bless you. <laughs> In reading from the Greek, the passage right there, so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Those three terms are actually one word in the Greek, and it's the word, I'll, I'll, I'll butcher it. It says oik, oikodame. Oikodame. That sounds pretty good to me, which means this, to be built up and to be mature. So as the writers translated into English, it says, Jesus does all these different things so that you'll grow up and you'll mature. And that's a good thing. So that we can be mature Christians, not lacking anything. Have you ever met someone who's in their 30s or maybe 40s and they still act like a junior higher? Some of you are like, oh, I'm sitting next to one right now. Like, no, don't talk about your husband like that. Um, people can grow up physically and yet emotionally and on the inside still be pretty immature. People can, quote-unquote, get, get saved and give their lives to Jesus and still be an infant in their faith for many years. That's why there's a challenge for all of us to continue to grow, to continue to strive to become more and more like Jesus. And it's a work that God has to do inside of us, but we have to partner in that. We make ourselves available. Are you with me so far? And the three words that jump out to me here, these are some characteristics of a life-giving individual, and for that matter, for a church. There's many other telltale signs, but three from this passage right here, and that is this. Someone who is growing, someone who is connected to Jesus and the family of God is someone who then is healthy, they're growing, and they're full of love. They're healthy, they're growing, and they're full of love. Well, how do you determine whether someone is even healthy when it comes to their spiritual life? <laughs> it's not like you can go to Kaiser and ask for a, an MRI of your spiritual heart. Or an AKG. Is that a, no, is that a gun? <laughs> AKG 47? Oh, that's a different kind of test. Or help me, Jesus. But you can't go in and get a CAT scan or an x ray and go in there and say, Ooh, man, your spiritual life is pretty unhealthy. I just recommend three hours of prayer every day of the week this week and you'll get caught up. That's not how it works. How does someone determine their spiritual walk? Ooh, that person, they're on life support. They're barely saved. We got to pray for them. So they go to some kind of prayer meeting and they start gossiping, excuse me, they start interceding. There's some of the worst gossipers are when we go sometimes to some prayer meetings and like, Lord, I just want to pray for about and so-and-so. You know God, he needs some help. He's been drinking again, he's been doing this God and that God and na 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 Pretty soon the whole prayer meeting understands the dirt on brother so-and-so over here. Come on, let's not be gossipers. Let's be praying for people and covering them in love. Amen. But how do we determine, how do we recognize whether our spiritual lives, if we're healthy or not? The Bible says that you will recognize folks by their fruit. What kind of fruit is being produced in your life? If you've got a root of bitterness, guess what kind of fruit is going to be produced in your life? Ooh, that apple looks good. Take a bite. <laughs> better beer face you know it's like ah oh, it's like oh, you contorted there's bitterness and it's like what happened it looked good but on the inside filled with bitterness or whatever it could be unforgiveness pain whatever 
whatever the roots are, man, that's going to produce the fruit. And you will recognize the people based on the fruit that they're producing. The Bible says that your mouth will speak whatever your heart is full of. Your mouth gives it away. If you're full of negativity, your mouth is just going to be just talking negative about all kinds of stuff. You're just going to be a naysayer about everything. The, the, the cup for you will always be half empty. But if your heart is full of faith, man, and you're just thankful, thankful for what God's doing, you're going to notice that even in your confession, though things are difficult, you're going to be giving glory to God, and it's a telltale sign. Fruit, the words that come out of your mouth. Looking at this passage right here, these are three indicators right here. Healthy, growing, and full of love. How is a person healthy? I like to say like this, do you have a regular prayer life? Because if you don't, chances are you're probably not at the level of health that God wants you to be at. And there's a pressure from the enemy to say this. Ooh, you're not spiritual at all. You don't pray enough. Um, just look around. I think with the exception of maybe three people here, nobody prayed for eight hours yesterday. We actually had three people that prayed for eight hours yesterday. I'm like, nah, they prayed for the whole group combined, you know. But the chances are, if we look around, we all hear the voices. You don't pray enough. You don't read enough. You're not spiritual enough. And we get bombarded with this, you're not enough nonsense from hell. Am I preaching to somebody here? I, ha I go through the same thing. I'm supposed to be a leader. I'm supposed to be an example. And then the enemy likes to, well, you're not this enough. You're not doing that enough or whatnot. But prayer, prayer is all about having a lifestyle of just communicating with God. It's not quantity. It's not having to get down on your knees for a full hour every day. But it's having regular times where you connect with God. Very seldom do I actually pray a full hour straight in every day. But all throughout the day, I am com communicating with God. If you're hanging out with me throughout the day, you'll hear me all of a sudden, we're hanging out in the car, going to get some burgers, going whatever. It's like I'm praying in the spirit. And we're not just talking about praying over meals, but all throughout the day, include the Holy Spirit. That produces health in you. You're, you're communing with God all day long. <laughs> some of us only talk to God when we come to church. Hey, God, what's up? How's it going? Good to see you again. Yeah, we're running a little late tonight for church, but hey, just in time for the last song, you know. Everyone has their hands up, so here I am, Lord. Here I am to worship. God, I'm going to sing really loud because you know I haven't worshipped you all week, and we try to catch up. It doesn't work that way. But man, we can include God all throughout the day, 24-7. Praying, being in the Word. Do you have a Bible reading plan? If you don't, find one. We have version that's available. Go on version and pick whichever plan works for you. Even if you only read two minutes out of the day, spend some time in the Word of God. Some of us, man, we're, we're like on the diet from the Bible. <laughs> we're on the no Bible reading plan. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're not healthy here, folks. You need to be taken in from the Word of God. Read a little something, something, even if your mind doesn't. All of us, myself included, all of us are being equipped. It's a lifelong course. Sonia is trying to finish her high school, get her GED. We're praying for Sam that he'll finish junior high one of these days. And, but for the rest of us all, going through the school of hard knocks and all, um, it's always a school and we're growing more and more in the knowledge of who God is and praise God for the gifts that he brings to us. But in Ephesians 4, 16, the key verse here, it says this, and then he, Jesus, it says that he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work and it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Jesus gives these gifts so that the whole body then can help one another. Now, I was studying this out, and in the Greek, by the way, I, I knew a little Greek when I uh, lived in Concord, but then he moved to Chicago. Some of you guys will get that joke tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> I know. Thank you. I'll sign autographs later. Bless you. <laughs> And reading from the Greek, the passage right there, so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Those three terms are actually one word in the Greek, and it's the word, I'll, I'll, I'll butcher it, it says oik, oikodame. Oikodame, that sounds pretty good to me, which means it's to be built up and to be mature. So as the writers translated into English, it says Jesus does all these different things so that you'll grow up and you'll mature. 
And that's a good thing. So that we can be mature Christians, not lacking anything. Have you ever met someone who's in their 30s or maybe 40s and they still act like a junior higher? Some of you are like, oh, I'm sitting next to one right now. Like, no, don't talk about your husband like that. Um, people can grow up physically and yet emotionally and on the inside still be pretty immature. People can, quote unquote, get, get saved and give their lives to Jesus and still be an infant in their faith for many years. That's why there's a challenge for all of us to continue to grow, to continue to strive to become more and more like Jesus. And it's a work that God has to do inside of us, but we have to partner in that. We make ourselves available. Are you with me so far? And the three words that jump out to me here, these are some characteristics of a life-giving individual, and for that matter, for a church. There's many other telltale signs, but three from this passage right here, and that is this. Someone who is growing, someone who is connected to Jesus and the family of God is someone who then is healthy, they're growing, and they're full of love. They're healthy, they're growing, and they're full of love. Well, how do you determine whether someone is even healthy when it comes to their spiritual life? <laughs> it's not like you can go to Kaiser and ask for a, an MRI of your spiritual heart or an AKG. Is that a, no, is that a gun? <laughs> AKG 47? Oh, that's a different kind of test. Or help me, Jesus. But you can't go in and get a CAT scan or an X-ray and go in there and say, ooh, man, your spiritual life is pretty and healthy. I just recommend three hours of prayer every day of the week this week, and you'll get caught up. That's not how it works. How does someone determine their spiritual walk? Ooh, that person, they're on life support. They're barely saved. We got to pray for them. So they go to some kind of prayer meeting and they start gossiping, excuse me, they start interceding. There's some of the worst gossipers are when we go sometimes to some prayer meetings and like, Lord, I just want to pray for about and so and so. Well, you know, God, he needs some help. He's been drinking again. He's been doing this God and that God and nah, 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 nah. Pretty soon the whole prayer meeting understands the dirt on brother so and so over here. Come on, let's not be gossipers. Let's be praying for people and covering them in love. Amen. But how do we determine, how do we recognize whether our spiritual lives, if we're healthy or not? The Bible says that you will recognize folks by their fruit. What kind of fruit is being produced in your life? If you've got a root of bitterness, guess what kind of fruit is going to be produced in your life? Ooh, that apple looks good. Take a bite. <laughs> better beer face you know it's like ah oh, it's like oh, contorted there's bitterness and it's like what happened it looked good but on the inside filled with bitterness or whatever it could be unforgiveness pain whatever whatever the roots are man that's going to produce the fruit and you will recognize the people based on the fruit that they're producing the bible says that your mouth will speak whatever your heart is full of your mouth gives it away if you're full of negativity, your mouth is just going to be just talking negative about all kinds of stuff. You're just going to be a naysayer about everything. The, the, the cup for you will always be half empty. But if your heart is full of faith, man, and you're just thankful, thankful for what God's doing, you're going to notice that even in your confession, though things are difficult, you're going to be giving glory to God, and it's a telltale sign. Fruit, the words that come out of your mouth. Looking at this passage right here, these are three indicators right here. Healthy, growing, and full of love. How's a person healthy? I like to say like this. Do you have a regular prayer life? Because if you don't, chances are you're probably not at the level of health that God wants you to be at. And there's a pressure from the enemy to say this. Ooh, you're not spiritual at all. You don't pray enough. Um, just look around. I think with the exception of maybe three people here, nobody prayed for eight hours yesterday. We actually had three people that prayed for eight hours yesterday. I'm like, nay, they prayed for the whole group combined, you know? But the chances are, if we look around, we all hear the voices, you don't pray enough, you don't read enough, you're not spiritual enough, and we get bombarded with this, you're not enough nonsense from hell. Am I preaching to somebody here? I, ha I go through the same thing. I'm supposed to be a leader. I'm supposed to be an example. And then the enemy likes to, well, you're not this enough, you're not doing that enough or whatnot. But prayer, prayer is all about having a lifestyle of just communicating with God. It's not quantity. It's not having to get down on your knees for a full hour every day. But it's having regular times where you connect with God. Very seldom do I actually pray a full hour straight in every day. But all throughout the day, I am com communicating with God. 
If you're hanging out with me throughout the day, you'll hear me all of a sudden, we're hanging out in the car, going to get some burgers, going whatever. It's like, I'm praying in the spirit. And we're not just talking about praying over meals, but all throughout the day, include the Holy Spirit. That produces health in you. You're, you're communing with God all day long. <laughs> some of us only talk to God when we come to church. Hey God, what's up? How's it going? Good to see you again. Yeah, we're running a little late tonight for church, but hey, just in time for the last song, you know. Everyone has their hands up, so here I am, Lord, here I am to worship. God, I'm going to sing really loud because you know I haven't worshipped you all week, and we try to catch up. It doesn't work that way. But man, we can include God all throughout the day, 24-7. Praying, being in the Word. Do you have a Bible reading plan? If you don't, find one. We have version that's available. Go on version and pick whichever plan works for you. Even if you only read two minutes out of the day, spend some time in the Word of God. Some of us, man, we're, we're like on the diet from the Bible. <laughs> we're on the no Bible reading plan. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're not health. We're concluding the service tonight. If you need prayer about any one thing, we got a couple leaders that are going to be up front. You can come and find one of us. We'd love to pray with you. For the rest of us, man, have a wonderful week. God bless you if you're online. Amen. If you don't have a local church that you can connect with, I'd encourage you to find a place that you can come and connect with other people as well. God loves you. He's got a great plan for your lives. We love you. Bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. Bless you.